Finally, the second part of 3.4 is arriving. We have Hu Tao, one of the older DPS in Genshin Impact, but is she still worth it? Should you still pull on her? Well, I happen to use her all of the time. She's one of my favorite DPS characters. With how old she is, the answer might surprise you, as well as Yelan returning one of literally, I think, the best characters to be added last year in Genshin is rerunning. They're also coming back, obviously, with their own unique five-star weapons. Should you be pulling on those banners for those weapons or are there alternatives for these characters? I'm going to try to break everything down about two of my favorite characters in Genshin so you guys know everything that's changed team-wise, character-wise. Well, basically as much info on them as I can put into a single video so you guys can make the decisions yourselves when those banners do release. And as always, make sure you call someone today, even if it's just to say hi. The first character here is gonna be Hu Tao. How good is she? She is a really old pyro DPS character and DPS seem to be a dime a dozen nowadays. So does she still have the sauce in order to make those DPS numbers fly? Now I've been using her recently and I wanna tell you guys, she's still really fun to play. I love Hu Tao. If you want big single target damage, she is an absolute monstrosity. This is back in the day we went from Pyro with Hu Tao and then Xing Cho and then maybe like a Zongli as well as an Animo character such as Venti or Sucrose to really buff up the numbers we can do. There's been some changes to the game since Hu Tao first was released on her original banner and we have access to new artifact sets. Now, one of my personal favorites, which has indirectly buffed her up a bit, is the Shimanawa's Reminiscence set. The two piece doesn't do a whole lot for her as it only gives 18% attack and Hu Tao's an HP sort of main character. But the four piece here is when you use an elemental skill, you get 50% normal charged and plunging attack damage for 10 seconds. And that works fantastically with her elemental skill guide to the afterlife, which has uh, a nine second duration. So you're gonna be able to get that 50% normal and charge attack damage, which is where most of her damage comes from. If you've been checking out guides before, you know the N1C combo, which is one normal attack, one charge attack. You can jump, you can cancel it with the dash. It's a fantastic thing to have access to this artifact set as well. Now it does drain some of your elemental burst energy, but honestly you can use the burst right before you swap out, gain some energy back when you swap back in. And I've never really had a problem with it at all. I've been using this artifact set on her for a while and I can't get enough of the damage numbers that you can pull out with the proper rolls on this set. Now, if you want to use something different than this, we do have another brand new set that's come out since Sumeru, and that's the Gilded Dream set. While not as powerful as some of the other ones, it is another option if you've been farming up some of the new artifact sets for your Dendro characters. This gives you two piece of Elemental Mastery of 80, and then the four piece here is either gonna give you stacking a bonus attack percent, which isn't the craziest thing for every Elemental Party member that matches your type, but you also do get Elemental Mastery for different party members who aren't your type. So if you're running something like Hu Tao, double hydro and then Zhongli or Venti or Kazaha, you're gonna have a bunch of different members in your party that aren't gonna be pyro element. So this is gonna give you a ton of elemental mastery on your Hu Tao and it's gonna be pretty good. Now, one takeaway from this set though to keep in mind is that it does buff up your elemental mastery. So if you have another character that you're trying to use, maybe a burgeoning team with Nahida or you're using Sucrose to give a bunch of elemental mastery, this set's gonna be a little bit worse than the other ones because the characters in that sort of team composition are already giving you a ton of elemental mastery. You'd be better served with some of the other artifact set bonuses over just getting even more elemental mastery. And then we have the old standby Crimson Witch of the Flames, which is two piece of pyro damage bonus. And it's also going to increase your vaporize and melt damage by 15%. It does have the ability for you to max three stacks to get more pyro damage bonus. Hu Tao herself can't do that because her elemental skill just doesn't work that way. But one thing that was changed about the Crimson Witch of the Flame set, you guys know it, we can go back and craft old artifact sets now. So if you're farming up new stuff for other characters, you have a bunch of five stars that you don't want to use. Well, then throw those useless five stars away and craft some of this set. So with the addition of new artifact sets for her and the ability for you to farm up Crimson Witch of the Flames just by crafting them, the ease of use of building this character is actually way easier than when she first was introduced. You have a lot more options at artifacts now. Now, another thing that's changed around Hu Tao teams is the teammates that you can use her with. So we had the old standby of Xing Cho, but now we have 
Layla to be your shielder, also apply Cryo and some sort of freeze team where you kind of melt, kind of vaporize sometimes. We also have obviously Yelon here. You guys know about the double hydro Hu Tao team already. Extremely potent, extremely powerful. You guys have seen the footage playing alongside of us having this conversation. It is a little bit of a one-way conversation, but you guys have been seeing the numbers back behind there. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this character. And these are the four I've been kind of running with Hu Tao right now which is crazy because yeah Yelan's the other character on the banner and they work really well together that's not it we also have extra characters with dendro if you want to run something crazy like a burgeoning team you can try that out too it's gonna be pretty fun to throw out dendro pyro hydro all on the same team now you are gonna hit yourself with some of the burgeoning aoe damage so you're gonna want to bring a shielder as well but we have access to zongli we have access to Layla now so you're gonna have some solid shield options especially Layla I think she's a little bit overlooked by a lot of players in the Genshin community but she does do a fantastic job of protecting and shielding and making Hu Tao a character that's not so terrorizing to play now another thing you really should ask yourself you've probably seen it already but do you enjoy the play style of Hu Tao if getting down to like 10% 20% HP and playing there always whether you're doing abyss or story mode if that's gonna stress you out and you don't like seeing your HP bar low at pretty much all times, Hu Tao might not be the character for you. However, she's very fun to play and as long as you don't get stressed out over it, you start learning to play with shield characters or doing some dodge animation cancels with her too, which won't be a part of this video. We'll have a guide video on that. She's very easy to play, very fun to play as long as you're not gonna get freaked out when you have like 1% HP remaining. That means you're strong when you're playing Huta. You gotta get in there. You're strong with this character, not scared. Now a constellation to consider here is gonna be the C1 constellation. Depending on who you talk to, right? They'll say it's either OP, really good or useless. And I'm in the really good category in this one. The constellation one here is gonna allow you to avoid consuming stamina when you do a dash attack, which is pretty big for her because it's going to allow you to do a couple things. Normally, when you get into playing with Hu Tao, animation canceling is something that you kind of want to do and it's not that hard to do. The two main ones is after you charge attack, you can dash like this, or you can charge attack and jump like this. Now, if you charge attack and dash, it does consume that stamina. The C1 takes that stamina cost away and you can do two dashes before there's some sort of internal cooldown. You have to do a jump cancel. So you'll be like dash, dash, jump, dash, dash, jump. And you're running out of stamina very quickly without that constellation one. Now, if you have your ability active, you can see I can just kind of never really run out of stamina here even if i'm dash canceling around and it's a very powerful thing as well you're looking at around like a 20 ish percent damage increase for most teams and most players depending on your ping etc or your device that you're playing on but on top of that it also allows you to get around a little bit faster in combat you can throw some swords out from xing Shu or dice from yelan dash attack and hit that charge attack on the dash rocking vaporize it's, it's a good thing to have access to in your toolkit one other notable thing between the two different animation cancels here is jumping does not give you invincibility frames but dashing does so you're gonna be able to dash around have more stamina and with Hu Tao wanting to play at lower hp maybe you don't have the greatest shielder you're gonna use that free dash to sort of dodge a lot of damage and make Hu Tao this very graceful sort of polearm user on the battlefield. Now, Yelan's a character that came out and I instantly fell in love with her. A lot of theory crafters really saw the potential of her on the damage sheets and they're very correct about that. She's very strong in a lot of different teams, whether you're playing with Dendro and Bloom and Hyper Bloom, you're trying to vaporize, you're trying to mess around with Yelan. There's a lot of cool stuff about her. My favorite thing with this character though, and this is sort of like a weird one because we already know how strong she is in combat. I cannot get enough of her elemental skill. In the open world, being able to use her elemental skill can just take you right into cutscenes like this on accident. All right, so like I was saying, using her elemental skill allows you to really get around in the world. And it's one of my favorite things to do. You're so fast, so efficient, it's so fun. You go into domains, you do the stuff, you sprint right up towards the tree, get all the stuff you want. 
I don't know how to describe it. Maybe I have a problem with just running really fast like this in Genshin, but it's something that you really should take note of. I love that play style. I love that ability in the open world. And it's literally because of that ability, I found me using Yelon in pretty much every open world exploration team since I've gotten her. But it's true, it's true. Like since I've had access to this character, I don't think I've taken her out of my world exploration team. You can get around so fast. And I know we're pulling for waifus and husband, whatever it is, but that is something you should definitely consider when pulling for Yelon or asking yourself if you want to use her. Now, as far as combat efficiency goes, she's an absolutely insane character. Scales off HP, has ascensions to give your party member more HP. She has the ability to boost damage, just period. Any elemental damage of all active characters during the duration of her elemental burst, which lasts a pretty lengthy 15 second duration. One of the best elemental bursts we've been seeing in Genshin since her inception as a character. Free damage like Xingqiu, bonus damage to your active character, bonus health to everyone. So all these health scaling characters out there are gonna be getting even better out here, larger shields, etc. And she also does do a substantial amount of damage with Lingering Lifeline. She's also pretty easy to build as a character. I've been running like double two piece for Hydro Damage Bonus as well as Energy Recharge. She doesn't need a ton of stats and she's got some nice weapon variety. But speaking of weapons, what about the two weapons these characters are coming with? Well, for Hu Tao, the Staff of Homa is just by far and away her best weapon. If you're a Hu Tao fan and you want her to be tip top shape, even just the R1 Staff of Homa, is fantastic for her. It gives her crit damage and also lets you get in on the HP scaling of her elemental skill guide to the afterlife with additional HP scaling from the staff of Homa. So you're gonna be able to do a ton of damage with this thing and you guys know how powerful the staff is by now. I'm already wasting my words. It's definitely worth picking up. Now for Yelan, her weapon is gonna be by far and away her best damage weapon for her own personal damage. However, she's a lot of supportive options that are very good. You could even argue that the Elegy for the end is her best support weapon. It's gonna give you the energy recharge you need on her to make her flexible so you can put her in different team comps with different elemental affinities. Maybe double hydro, you don't really need it that much, but maybe if she's your sole hydro character on another party, this energy recharge is gonna help out a ton. Also in these reaction teams that she's really the core of in your party due to her elemental burst, having access to bonus elemental mastery and attack for your other party members allows them to do a ton of damage. Just like we were talking about with Hu Tao. Well, this can give Hu Tao a little bit of attack, but also some elemental mastery to help Hu Tao vaporize even harder than before and make up for that loss in Yelan's personal damage by making Hu Tao do even more damage. So this could be something if you have laying around that you have had on Venti or another support that uses a bow, this could allow you to skip the banner for Yelan's weapon and walk tall and proud and have the Elegy sitting there or the Favonius Warbow as a supportive option. And the Favonius, we wanna to get to this, is the four star, I'll call it the gold standard weapon. If you don't have access to the Warbow on her, you really shouldn't be using any of the other four star under options. It's just that good in the right build with the right substats. Now we'll talk about more about that sort of stuff in the actual build guys coming out in the next couple of days. So stay tuned to that. Make sure you subscribe if you wanna see that stuff. But the Favonius is just so good on her that it's really only beaten by a couple options, namely the Elegy, which is gonna be an even better support weapon. And then of course, if you wanna pull for her own weapon for personal damage, you can do that too. And I know we have some cool characters coming out. I mean, Dea, ho hopefully she gets a little bit of something because I'm a big Dea fan, but right now I'm being a little Dea sad, if you know what I'm saying. Hydro Archon's coming as well, but these characters are tried, tested, and proved. So if you like the characters, the way they play the character model, they're also very powerful on top of that. So you can't really do any wrong. You're getting the best of all the worlds. If you enjoy the character aesthetically, they're also really good to play with and they're super fun to play with too. So it's the best of every world. There's not really a reason to not pull on this banner if that is your mentality. So let me know what you guys think down below and I'll see you guys in the next one.